good evening everyone this is nagarajan from openmentor.net is my voice clear to you all can you please raise your hands okay that's good let us first uh, recapture what we have seen yesterday recap of last class okay we talked about need for flow chart the definition of flow chart as pictorial representation of uh, the logic also we talked about the basic shapes okay basic shapes connectors then adding text to that then uh, within the shapes we talked about start stop input display process and then decisions then loop and then loop counter okay then we talked about page connectors also these flow charts are extremely used especially in uh, every organization where we have to give detailed instructions if you give text people will read but more than the text the picture talks much more that is where people use flow chart a lot so today we are going to cover a different aspect I am going to Visio, Microsoft Visio. Today we are going to talk about UI design or architecture design. Which which one you want? I can take both. Uh, but again, to all also we have a class. Which one you want to take? If you want to take uh, the architecture design, please raise your hands. Okay, good. Many people have raised hands on the architectural design. Okay, architecture diagrams. First of all, let me open up the notepad. What is architecture? In, in a very simple manner, I don't want to complicate the terms with respect to exact definitions, different nomenclature of different industries, right? When I say architecture, it gives a big picture, okay? Number one, it may not be at a very very minute level it is giving us a bigger picture okay when I say building architecture uh, we heard about Roman architecture it doesn't talk about the individual capacity of every pillar but on the whole it is giving a bigger picture so it gives a bigger picture the other point about architecture is pattern in which okay individual objects are arranged always there's a pattern you could definitely see the way uh, a chain is made in uh, in India and a gold chain made in some other country there's a pattern right from seeing that the way an earring is made in India the way the earrings are made in uh, other countries you could see a pattern so there's a pattern so architecture has a pattern right then Architecture also talks about flow of information, especially when it comes to engineering side, how the flow happens, right? From which place to which place, what moves. If something gives you a bigger picture, then you can always ask me a question, okay? Design also does the same thing. It talks about the flow of information, it talks about the patterns. Yes, definitely I agree, but design is talking at a minute level also. It can go to the any detail level. Whereas when you take architecture, architecture appears at a very big level and it, it follows a pattern. Many typical patterns you could see um, in, in the world, if you take the typical software world you can say 
multi process architecture okay within a single chip multiple processes are running then you might have heard a word called the n tier architecture okay then you can also know talk about uh, client server architecture there are these are all patterns some kind of a methodology through which you are able to visualize the system that is what an architecture using visio i am going to show about two things number one in terms of hardware and the components okay there is something called hardware and components related architecture then another architecture is with respect to software okay there is another architecture we can always talk about functional architecture okay there is something called functional architecture there is something called software architecture there is something called hardware and components architecture is this clear to you all the very first step there are three types of architecture you can think of in the software world we are going to see one after the other good very good let us get into this i am minimizing this notepad the first thing i got a new within this okay when you come over here software okay within software you could see something called the enterprise application okay i click on the enterprise application on your left hand side you could see a set of uh, laptops spare parts workstations mainframes right servers right some user diagrams right typically you could see something related to hardware over here you can also add a mobile uh, thing over here okay now how an architecture will look in the hardware okay let me expand this to say 60% now i am going to draw a simple diagram how the office architecture in terms of my servers and systems are going to look like for example a boundary okay when you say boundary right you have to say within this boundary these machines agree, uh, exist within this boundary these machines exist for example i say this is one boundary i draw this uh, diagram assume that we have an office that office is connected to some gateway for internet and uh, within our office we have something external to the office we have something in between we say we have something now this is the interface that i want to have okay now if i right click okay again standard stuff like uh, format shape everything will come over here right if you want to have a text okay i want to have a text over here you can always say click on the text um, internet gateway server room i'm saying here in the office let me increase it to say uh, 75% you could see it much better i have a server room then i have the other office area right okay i have the other office area now i click on this text other office staff area so i am dividing the same office into two parts one is the internet gateway server room and the other office staff area now i am going to say in my office is my voice clear to you all is it loud and clear because a few people have uh, raised okay good i could see hands raising that's good now here i have got multiple servers okay i just drag and drop this is a server okay within that now i want to have a text this is the uh, net server okay 
now i want to have a firewall server okay i want to have a single server as a firewall okay then i have a firewall server then i have one more server as the backup server okay so in my server room i have got three servers okay everywhere if you use shift key and arrow key you can move it how are they connected right i want to because these these servers are connected now i am taking this standard thing like this i am connecting this to this and i am taking this one more thing uh, this is connected here and this is connected here so these servers are connected in this pattern what is the text that i want to have for this now i am saying this is uh, lan okay and i want to have uh, one more text okay fiber optic okay again you can shape i am just reducing it to eight points i am reducing it to eight point so that you can view it very clearly now this is a fiber optic cable and this is a lan cable first of all why should i do like this when you look from the end client point of view the hardware is a costly subject right the moment you draw a diagram then he will question hey here you made one server here you made three servers or two servers then you can always say backup uh, two machines okay now in the net server i can say it is uh, three machines the moment the client sees this oh you have made it as one server this is three machines this is two machines how is it connected to the external world now i can also say this is like a, this is another server or say a spare i could say this is another server now i'm saying this is router and uh, i am connecting this router to my server okay and this router is connected to the external world okay i am saying this router is connected now i can i can say this router is connected to net 1 mbps yeah again you can use any name okay whatever service provider you are using the moment i give this diagram to my client he will know i have to make arrangement for a router net servers firewall backup now i can always say hey firewall should come first then only the net server should come the diagram is wrong i can always say i move this then i move this over here right sorry i should not rotate it i'm just moving this firewall over here uh this link okay i am connecting to this ah sorry somewhere else i missed that link i can always use this link this is a very simple link okay router is connected to the firewall that firewall is connected to my net server okay again it's i have to rotate this you can always use format shape right you can do this rotate right all these things are possible now the client will say okay first i should have a router here i have to make a communication link to this and this then i should have a fiber optic cable whether this fiber optic cable should be 3 meters 10 meters 20 meters then there's a lan through which the backup machines are connected now he will say okay this is fine for the server room how are my office other machines are connected now i can say this and this okay are connected via okay 100 mbps line okay 100 mbps right so office systems and the server room are connected to 100 mbps line in office how is it located i can always say in office 
it can have workstation okay a workstation is nothing but a system right and I can have multiple workstation like this and the laptops like this all these are connected via LAN okay I can always say this is connected to this and uh, this is also connected to the LAN so every machine should get connected to the LAN okay otherwise the cabling guys may not do the what you want you may be they may install the systems they may happily go but I want all the machines to get connected to this 100 Mbps line which is connected to my server room so that every workstation here in my office can connect to the internet many places when you are dealing with you can ask me oh it's a very severe very simple trivial drawing but Imagine BPO companies, IT companies, they are installing thousands of systems, okay, every day. If you go to IT parks, in a single floor you will see 400 machines. How each machine is connected, right? Do we need a server over here in first floor? Again, you can have floor by floor how they are connected. I can say this, I have put it as other staff area, but you can say, in first floor, four machines are there. In second floor, 20 machines are there. In third floor, 200 machines are there. They are connected by 100 Mbps or 10 Mbps or fiber optic. And you have to very specifically say that. Otherwise, the necessary hardware arrangements may not be available at that point. So people will be confused. It is as simple as in every hospital, which floor has got how many beds, in what orientation, what kind of bed it is, they need to know accurately so that they can send the right patient to the right kind of the bed. Right? Some beds will have uh, slanting positions, some beds will have uh, uh, some other equipments attached to it. Right? It is as important as that. A hardware diagram that talks about servers, machines and other spare parts and what is the boundary of each of those hardware, right? It is extremely important because at some point of time, someone has to make all these arrangements. This is hardware architecture. For every floor they will draw. For every server room or mail, I have not talked about mail server or uh, exchange server or uh, web server you can always have I want to have a web server here I want to have an application server here I want to run this in this one right anything is possible web server mail server application server everything is possible and you need to allocate a separate diagram to that most importantly this machine and this machine this link is it fiber optic is it LAN or is it wireless right Suppose a uh, router is connected to the firewall this way and this entire office is connected via wireless I, and you need to say this has to be connected as wireless. Then someone will ask where is the wireless router? Up to this is our LAN cable. At some point of time I need to have a wireless router here. Only that wireless router can communicate to this, right? In those, in that particular case you don't have these lines because it's wireless right unless you very very specifically say right nobody is going to make it is as simple as a civil engineering drawing in civil engineering drawing if you don't draw this that should be a window like this this window should have four doors right and this should have a, a glass glass part it should have a blind over here right unless somebody draws the supplier is not going to do that right same way in hardware also every machine every connectivity floor by floor in fact in many companies cabin by cabin they will draw the hardware architecture and then only they will give it to the people this is how I need the hardware someone has asked will it give a, will it generate a report to say how many uh, meters of cable will be required to do connectivity of this no 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 this is only diagram this software is not a planning software okay 
in this software it is only displaying information in a clean diagrammatic fashion with utmost use i am not a hardware engineer but i am able to draw a diagram this is what i want because i am able to visualize same way if you are able to visualize it is as simple as that this tool helps you this tool does not provide how many meters of cable is required how many servers are required what configuration is required no this is not that kind of a planning or sizing software is this clear so far hardware architecture can you please raise the hands okay good the second thing let us get into the software architecture i am closing this window i want to have a software architecture again if you go to software okay there is something called uml diagram okay uml model diagram okay this is a markup language like xml is extended this is like a universal is a markup language a markup language meaning it's a notational language within uml there are lot of things activity diagrams collaboration diagrams component diagrams deployment diagrams right there are lot of uh, sequence diagrams uml itself has got a lot of diagrams okay within that what we are interested is this one the when you say component diagram right either you can use this component or you can use this deployment okay very similar you could see the node component node instance component instance everything right this talks about software architecture okay let me make it 50% now how the software will look like because in software you will have classes you will have methods and which runs in which machine that is very important because uh, suppose i give you three machines and you have to deploy a var file and you need to deploy a stored procedure which software runs in what machine that is very very important to do that this is what we do there is something called either you can use node instance or node but most of the time we will use the same thing uh, an instance meaning it is a it's a replica of something okay so i am using say something called node okay i take node ha huh, suddenly it has this is same like a box a box meaning it's a machine okay this is node i double click on the node if you double click it shows a lot more information here when you click on this properties you could see the name of it is node i'm saying this is the web server and you could see lot of things attributes operation components constraints tagged values okay it means a lot it is almost you can do a full designing itself in this particular uh, thing okay but right now i am not going to do how the design part should work but we are going to see what is the uh, use of this a node simply means it's a machine okay it's a simple it's a machine or it's a server okay i say this is a web server i want a component okay a component is some program in the web server i want uh, say login servlet i want login servlet to run that means a login servlet is deployed under this web server now i want to have another component this is like a registration servlet okay and i want to have one more program running in this one which is called uh, 
purchase order bean okay if you are familiar with the java coding a servlet is also a program a bean is also a program right one is a class one is a servlet now i want to have another component which is like uh, which is a page right i say this is a page this is called user reports all the user reports dot jsps will run over here now i want to have one more node another box or another machine i draw over here and these two machines are connected via this uh, interface communication link okay this is a communication link now i say these two machines are connected via 10 mbps so this is one box this is another box a box is nothing but a machine now i say this is a application server this application server has got some other components for example okay data validator data validator bean so i say this is a bean java bean that runs over here and i have got another uh, program which is called data access layer which is interfacing between database and this now i want to have one more node okay this is like i want to say this is the actual database server now i say this is the db server see the difference between the hardware and other things when you draw that hardware diagram right you did not say which program is running in which machine you simply say there is a machine and this machine and that machine are connected whereas here you are talking about there is a machine which in that machine i run these servlets and beans in this machine i run these beans okay and then i i am going to say all these utilities right utilities bean is running in this machine that means when the programmer or the tester is trying to do something he should look at the utilities utilities bean only in this machine he should utilize he should see the po bean only in this now i i'm going to say there is a communication interface between uh, this machine okay let me see the link communication link it is that and i am connected to this okay so we are seeing web server is not directly connected to the database server now i am going to say all my components all my stored procedures okay stored procedures they are running over here so a person who is actually copying the dot java files or dot jar files or war files or stored procedures or servlets that person should copy the right program in the right machine this is called software architecture that means which program runs in what machine some people also call it as a deployment diagram reason is this is how they have to copy finally towards the uh, go live process when i say go live after testing everything it has to be open to the public or the users to be used this is how my software will look like program a will be in this box program b will be in this box program c will be in this box a box or also known as a node also known as machines okay this is called software architecture or a deployment diagram a deployment diagram will very clearly show which program should be placed in which machine is this clear can you please raise the hands if i don't give this diagram to somebody that person will copy the wrong program in the wrong place 
and there is one thing called version control in programs if a program with multiple versions exist in two different machines which one is being accessed people will have no clue if you go to um, the operating system there is a d drive there is a program files within program files things are arranged in proper folders if somebody messes up the folder structure your programs will not run properly same way if someone is messing up with the arrangement of where the bean should lie where the dll should lie where the stored procedure should lie right if somebody wrongly copies the stored procedure here obviously database is not going to respond right it is going to have a problem this is called deployment diagram or something called software architecture okay the third part the third part is functional architecture right functional architecture someone has raised the question i am a technical writer and i want to draw these uml diagrams yes to draw these uml diagrams you should have the knowledge of design and the uml diagrams first of all someone should know what is a bean what is a servlet what is a jsp page what do you mean by web server all the software terminologies and how they are linked to each other people must know then they can draw the uml diagrams yes it's a must you need to know uml diagrams the third one is called functional architecture okay when you say functional architecture you can draw it in either a normal flow chart way or you can also use some of these data flow model diagrams but more than this in most of the times if you can see here data flow diagram is available in flow chart also as well as in software also right so most of the time we will also use this data flow diagrams or data flow model diagrams and you could see many of them overlapping to each other right uh, what i would suggest is to draw a simple uh, functional architecture either you can use basic diagrams block diagram basic block diagram okay you can say the moment you say block diagram on the left hand side you will simply see some of the flow chart shop, uh, shapes itself okay you could see uh, but they are slightly uh, stylish okay the arrows are a little bit stylish right but most of the companies use this itself the flow chart di shapes itself normal uh, flow chart shapes okay the basic flow chart shape itself to do block diagrams i mean functional diagrams functional architecture what do you mean by functional architecture okay a flow chart will give information in detail step 1 step 2 step 3 step 4 step 5 something like that let me draw a simple sales functional architecture if i want to add a simple sales functional architecture it's as simple as this okay now i say here in the functional architecture we normally do not use any other shape other than this uh, process okay now i say this process is nothing but get purchase request from customer okay this is one one block this one block itself okay this one block itself will have a separate flow chart okay to get the purchase request from the customer this one block itself will have a separate flow chart step 1 how to get the purchase request step 1 step 2 step 3 step 4 will be a separate flow chart then the next step on a bigger picture as i said an architecture must give me a bigger picture okay i can either draw this way right okay now the second part after getting the purchase request okay now i am going to say 
generate inquiry to suppliers, right? This is a typical sales process where you can say inquiry meaning I need these, these items, you give me quotes. This will have a separate flow chart for it. Now I'm going to say one more step that is involved as get the quotations. Get quotations from all suppliers. Right? This is a separate block. Then the fourth step we are going to have compare quotations and generate PO. Compare all quotations generate purchase order. Right? So what we are trying to achieve over here is try to draw a bigger picture. Okay? Try to draw a bigger picture and each of these blocks will have its own separate flowcharts. Now you can also have connectors, whatever connector you want to have, a 45 degree or this or yesterday I talked about lines, right? Lines are one good thing which are uh, easy to uh, drag and drop. Okay. I'm just waiting for this to show the line icons. So a lot of line icons are available, that's why it's taking a lot of time to load. So in a sense, the functional architecture is nothing but a bigger picture with simply blocks and each block itself is going to have a lot of steps and that itself may translate to a separate flowchart. Okay. Now let me draw some connections over here. Okay, this is the directed line. Okay, now I'm saying this connects to this. Now I say this connects to this. I say this connects to this. In a sense, it's a very simple flow chart. But this itself has got comparing the quotation. How will I compare the quotation? Check around decision number one, compare the price. Decision number two, compare the number of people. Decision number three, compare the timeline. So that itself may come into a bigger flow chart. So a functional architecture will always have this kind of a blocks and you could see blocks flowing from one place to another and again you can give information of what is flowing from this to this. I can say this is the uh, inquiry emails. Okay. I am simply saying this is the inquiry email that I am printing. What flows in and what flows out of each block you need to clearly specify on the block diagrams. So if a block diagram has got a little bit of flow and some dependency between the blocks that becomes a functional architecture. Where do we use these functional architectures? Any ERPs, if you are familiar with ERPs, an ERP, right? I am just coming back to the notepad, okay? Functional architecture is heavily used first from the users or customers. We need this. Only when you know what functionality a customer wants, after that only we are going to decide what hardware, what software whether you are going to use a web server, whether you are not going to use the web server, everything depends upon what functionality the client wants. So the very first diagram that gets generated is functional architecture. After that is the flowchart. After that parallelly or after that you can have the hardware architecture and the software architecture. In smaller applications we don't need a, an architecture whereas if you say ERP that means the finance module, the accounts module, the sales module, the purchase module, right? The stores module, the planning module, the production module. If everything is interrelated from finance to stores, what is the connection? 
from stores to production what is the connection you cannot simply write some 5000 lines and ask people to read and you need to say simply this is a block from here this is flowing out this is coming in if you want to know further details expand that to a flow chart and let people read that flow chart so functional architecture is one of the very very important documents that gets generated right yearly in the cycle of SDLC. Any ERP implementation, they will first try to draw a functional architecture diagram. What are the modules? Basically blocks. Okay. Is this clear to you all? Okay. Just to recapture what we did today, we talked about hardware architecture, we talked about software architecture, we are talked about functional architecture. Any questions in this? Again, this session in Open Mentor is to give a glimpse of what is it and where is it used and essential elements we have given. Even tomorrow you can draw a functional architecture diagram for your own applications, maybe for an intranet portal, you can draw. Absolutely. Only thing is, it, it has to come by practice again and again. Someone is asking, is it all in design phase? Yes, pretty much. But functional architecture can go very well into the requirements phase also. The functional architecture document can still be done during the requirements phase itself. Many customers ask that diagram first. Because Diagrams need little time to review. The moment right, you show a diagram, it strikes the eye like anything. Rather than reading so many lines, I can find out the mistake so easily. Someone is using, he is asking a question, can we use it for teaching field also? Yes. Flowcharts are the best way to teach. Step by step, preparation of oxygen right apparatus required you have got procedure right procedure is nothing but step by step right I want to calculate the uh, titration nor uh, volumetric analysis or normality that's a step by step procedure calculate the focal length of a lens that's a procedure everything can be drawn as a flow chart if you give it in flow chart it is easy for people to understand rather than text but a flow chart take some time to draw, flowchart takes more space on the paper rather than the text. So that's why many people do not do that. But it is highly effective, it's highly, highly effective. Because when people remember the shapes, they can remember the steps very easily. Any other questions? Someone has asked, uh, I have to write software and hardware diagrams and text manuals. How many languages I should know? It's, it's not the language you should know. Languages always help for a person to do documentation. But more importantly, more than the syntax of a language, the concepts in the language, what is meant by object, what is meant by stored procedure, what is meant by a trigger in Oracle database or any database. The concept is more important in designing rather than the syntax. So, if you are able to understand the concepts very, very well in software, you can be a good technical writer. Any other questions as of now? I have not received any question. Uh, someone has asked any webinars on technical writers. We are looking for a good mentor. If someone is volunteering from this crowd to do technical writing, we will be also happy. If you are interested, please send a mail to webinar at softsmith.com towards technical writing webinars also. We will be happy. 
it's a very good field technical writing is a very very good field okay any other questions with respect to the architecture diagrams that we have seen today okay i don't see any more questions coming up on the topics that we discussed today so we will stop here today tomorrow we are going to see ui design how the ui layout should look like before giving to a, a web designer or a ui programmer some say someone is designing jsp page someone is designing asp.net page or a html page i have to draw something and then give it to that person it makes the work easier okay so that we will see tomorrow okay so i'll stop here today you'll meet tomorrow thanks a lot and in fact uh, i always leave last 20 minutes for question and answers it's up to you people to ask a lot of questions right to to engage us in the last 15 20 minutes okay Thanks a lot. Bye.